Hi folks, so today I'm on the Microsoft Forum and I have a problem here involving two tables of data and the end user is looking to compare that first table which includes unique email addresses for managers with a second table that includes multiple rows for each of those managers and ultimately what they want to end up with is an email going out to each of those managers based on who they are, which is their first table and then a summary of the rows that relate to their email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that solution today using both Excel and Power Automate, show you a bit of formatting for HTML tables in Power Automate, um, and ultimately give you a solution that you can take away and use yourself. So the first thing I want to do is just to copy that table, and I'm gonna go ahead into my Excel spreadsheet and paste that data in. And in order for it to be accessible in Power Automate, I need to go ahead and insert a table. So we'll just go ahead with clicking table there and ensure that my table has headers, because of course it does right now. And once it's created, I then want to go ahead and give that table a name so that it's easily identifiable in Power Automate. So I call that managers. And then I jump back into the uh, post here on the forum and grab that second table of data and jump back into Excel. And whilst I'm pasting this into the same Excel spreadsheet, of course, you could be using multiple sheets here or multiple files indeed. So we'll go ahead, insert a table. Again, it includes headers. I'll click on OK. And like before, I'll just go into the table design and give that a name. So now that my tables are constructed, I can see I've got a, an empty row there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. There we go. Uh, I'll jump into Power Automate, and the first thing that I want to do is I want to list the rows within both of those tables. So my file is saved on OneDrive. Of course, yours could be in SharePoint. Uh, it could also be dynamic, but uh, I'm just gonna go with the easy option for this demo and the file that I have here is Excel tables and the table I want to include for this action is the managers. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename that so it's easy to find and I'm going to go ahead and create an identical action but this time to list the rows of the other table. So again like before I'm on OneDrive, the document library is OneDrive I'll pick that same file and you could of course be using a different file or indeed a SharePoint action instead of uh, or SharePoint location instead of a OneDrive and this time instead of the manager's data I'm going to go for the big big old table of data and we're just going to go and rename that to data so again that it's easy to find. So now that we have both of those tables of data loaded into Power Automate via those actions we want to use an apply to each and loop through those list of managers. So here we are an apply to each and we want to choose value, but not value for the data. We want to choose a value for the managers and this is why it's important to rename those actions. So I can insert value and that is an array of all the rows that come back from this action. And then what I want to do now is use a filter array action because I want to take the data from this second list rows um, and I want to filter that based on the email address. So again, I can search for email here and I want to see if the email within the table data is equal to the email in the managers. And so that will take the email address from each of these loops within the apply to each and filter our data table for any matches. So once we have that new array that we've created we want to use the create HTML action and uh, all we have to simply do is provide this filter array as an input and so we use the body from the filter array. So one of the options that we need to consider, and we'll see this in the demonstration, I'll jump back into it after I've done my first run, is that the columns at the moment are set to automatic. And so there are a couple of rogue columns that will make your email look a bit messy, but we can come back and remove that at the end. And the other thing I'm gonna do, like before, I'm gonna rename this. This is actually gonna be my second table rather than my first table, because our first table needs to include just the email address of that manager. 
So again, I'm going to use the create HTML table action. And uh, I'm going to this time include the data from the current item. So scroll right down to the bottom, we can see the dynamic value current item. And what that relates to is the object that's passed in each of the loops from the value that we've put as the input to this apply to each. So this is basically each row will, will be output in the current item and we can use that row to create an HTML table. Now one of the things about create HTML table is it needs the data to be in an array so I'm going to put square brackets on either side and that will put the object which is part of current item into an array by including those square brackets. And again, just to make things easy, I'm going to quickly rename that to the first table. So finally, we want to send an email. And so we'll just pick that send an email action. And when we want to set our two, we're going to use a dynamic content, which will be based on the email ID from the managers table. So if we selected the data table, we'd end up in an apply to each because it would try and loop through all the email addresses and all the rows. Because we're using the manager's email address, which is part of the value, which is part of this apply to each loop, um, it doesn't create a loop because we're already in that loop here. In terms of a subject, I've got nothing dynamic, so I'll say here is your summary. And then in order to get those two uh, tables in, we can simply pick these dynamic values here, which is table one, I'll put a return and pick table two. Now one of the things to consider when adding tables into email is the basic format that's output, it is HTML. So I've actually jumped on to W3 schools here and they have some sample tables and styling. And I'm just gonna copy everything between these two style tags here. Uh, copy that and I can paste that into the editor here. So just by selecting this code view, I can go ahead at the beginning of this HTML code and paste in our style. And so that will give us a neatly styled set of tables based on the same style as our W3 school site. So now that that's complete, if I go ahead and hit save, one of the things I just want to quickly do on the data um, is just to make sure that uh, there's not anyone called mgr2 at anyone.com. I'm going to do a quick find and replace for anyone.com and just call it test.test.test .test and replace that all. And then I'm also just going to take one of the email addresses, we'll go for manager3 and I'll replace that with my own email address because all the other ones will bounce and that will allow us just to have a look at the content of the email. So we'll go ahead and replace that. We can see it's updated the uh, email there in the first table, and then we have one, two, three, four, five uh, from the second table. So I should have five rows in the email that I receive. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, test now, put it into manual, and uh, see what the output of these emails look like. So hopefully I'll hear a ping, there's my ping. And so I have four delivery failures, but if I go into my focus, I also have my summary. So you can see that the tables there are styled using the same coloring as the editor on W3 Schools, but I also have a couple of rogue columns that ideally I'd like to remove. But also I have, as requested by the end user on the forum, I have a table containing that initial row of manager data and then a summary of all those rows, all five rows that are relevant to that individual manager. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is just quickly look at how to remove those individual columns. And uh, we can do that by jumping back into the edit mode and having a look at this create HTML action. So the advanced options allow you to go into a custom mode and uh, all you want to do here is to insert the header name. So these are your column names. If we have a quick look back here, we've got name tot123. Um, so I'll type them in here as name tot1, tot2, tot3, 
three, and then the last one was email ID. And of course, you don't have to include all of these. You can just include the ones that are relevant to your solution. And then we need to go into the expression builder here and just type in item, the open and close brackets, a question mark, square brackets with single quotes in the in the middle here, and then type in each of these column names. So these are the names of the actual columns within Excel. And again, I've copied that expression, I'll paste it in, and I can go ahead and type in tot, tot1, tot2, and tot3. Just go ahead and copy that and do the rest of them. And tot3. And then finally, the last one I want to do here is the email ID. So now that that's done, I won't bother making changes to the second table, but I'll go ahead and save it and just let you see the changes that come through there. Quickly jump back into my email. Here's my latest version, and you'll see that my top table now uh, doesn't include those two columns of data that we didn't do before. So we could just apply exactly the same rule to our second table if we want to tidy that up too. So last of all, I had another question pop up, a very similar um, request, but uh, their data actually had um, duplicate email addresses. And I suppose the other way to look at it is, maybe we don't have this first table of email addresses, so we don't know who the distinct managers are. And what we want to do is get a list of distinct email addresses here. So what I can do with the original solution, if I go into edit and we've got our managers table, I could go ahead and delete that. And so I no longer know who my unique managers are. I can create that unique list using the second table. And we can do that using a select action. So this select action will allow us to create our own repurposed um, array. And we're going to use, again, the value, which is our uh, list of rows from this table. And then we're going to go into the text mode. And that will allow us to then select the email ID. And that will give us an array of every single email address that exists in that table. But uh, we don't want every single email address. We want just a distinct list or a distinct uh, array of email addresses. And we can do that by using a compose action. And within that compose action, we can then use union. And by doing a union of the output of the select on itself, so I've selected it once, put in a comma, select it a second time, and hit OK, we'll now have a list of distinct email addresses. Now, of course, I've lost the input there because we uh, have deleted that first action that was listing the managers. So we're no longer looking at this data here at all in this solution. Um, this is, in effect, my new list of or my new array of managers. So I want to insert this compose action here. Then when it comes to the filter array, Previously, we were doing a filter on the data, which still applies. We're wanting to do a filter on this table where the email address is equal to the email address, but no longer do we have access to that original table. So we're now going through this array of distinct emails, and we're wanting to compare against the current item because there's only a single value in each current item. The create HTML, I'm just going to leave as automatic. When it comes to this uh, secondary HTML, it doesn't apply anymore. So I'm going to delete it because, of course, we don't have access to that original table. So that data doesn't exist. So I will delete it because otherwise it's going to confuse things. And then just to keep things neat, oh, that's good. It's already removed that second uh, action. So all we have now is that original table. So what we've done here is rather than rely on our first table of data, which has the distinct list of email addresses, we have used a select action to take the rows from this table here and then return just the email ID. So we can see here we've taken the value, which is the array of rows. We've got the email ID and then we use union to create the distinct list or array of email addresses. We've inserted that array into the input of the apply to each 
and then we can do the original filter based on the current item, which will just be a single email address. Create one table now and supply that into an email. So if we go ahead and hit test, save and test that, we should get an identical result, albeit without that initial table. And hopefully there's gonna be a ping. Let's have a quick look at that. What's going on here? Oh, of course, we won't have the email ID anymore, so it will also be equal to current item. Go ahead and save that. Hit the test. Test again. And this time we should hear our ping, which will include my summary of five rows. And if we have a quick look at the history, just to understand what happened with the select. So the select has taken the following data as input, which is our array of, of rows. It's output all the individual email addresses in an array here. The compose has used union to turn that into just the distinct or the unique email addresses. And then we can use that array of email addresses like we did before in our apply to each. So helping out in the forum is something that I've thoroughly enjoyed over the last 12 months and uh, it's really accelerated my career and understanding of Power Automate. And so if that's something you're interested in and uh, not knowing where to start, feel free to reach out via social media and, and ask me the questions. But equally, if you're watching this video and thinking, how do I build this solution? Again, feel free, give me a shout. I love to hear from folk and uh, it'd be great to be able to uh, touch base and, and help you out. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.